I fixed the gutter, put a piece of uh, strap, like a strap metal, scrap metal. I cut it with metal shears. What I did is I used uh, a piece of the old galvanized roofing from the barn and I just cut a strip and screwed it into the siding and I also modified the top there. I had to cut a piece of the gutter, the connection off because it was too long and it was hitting up against the side of the house. So right now, as you can see, there's a gap. So it's not, it is not touching and it is very solid. It's in there good. So it won't fly off or anything and it'll collect the water the way it should be. It's pretty easy to cut that kind of metal and it's galvanized so it won't rust and it's, it's doing the job. It's holding it in place. So guys, it's official. We called two of our roosters. We had to because with four roosters and the neighbors, it just isn't right. I mean, do you know that at four in the morning they will start crawling and I've been up at four in the morning and I haven't been able to go back to sleep for like a week straight. At which point I just said enough is enough. <laughs> and we we went ahead and did it and it was our first time uh, doing that. And uh, it was, you know, we're not, we don't have the setup for that kind of thing. So it was a little challenging, but we've been able to do it anyway. And so the two roosters are now in freezer camp. And, uh, or at freezer camp. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. So um, it's much quieter now. Uh, we're still, you know, debating whether we want to keep the other rooster. It sounds far away because what we ended up doing is we ended up putting him in the old coop. So now we have Mr. Shuffles separate from the chickens because they kept pecking at his butt. His entire tail area is gone. He has no tail feathers left. So we separated him. We're going to give him a chance to heal and, and grow you know, his feathers back. And then we'll rejoin him back with his chickens. But the other one, we're going to wait because, God forbid something happens to this one rooster, we want to be able to have fertile eggs because we're going to get a um, incubator and then we want to start a new flock of chickens. So it will be a separate flock, we'll have another chicken coop with a separate run and all of that. So we're, we need to have fertile eggs and in order to do so we have to have roosters. So we're going to keep, for now, both roosters and then we'll decide within the next week whether we're going to keep that one or put him in the freezer. But for now, we took care of two and like I said, it was a little challenging, but uh, we did it. They look so big and then at the end they're so small because, you know, they're actually very skinny roosters. We're uh, in the process now of doing some work in the barn because we are going to be adding some new farm animals and we're not going to reveal yet what it's going to be because we want to keep you guys guessing and you can guess if you like you put it in the comments uh, if you have an idea of what we might be getting and if you know us and you've been following the channel for some time you might have a pretty good idea of what we might be getting but we're not saying yet because Pink told me not to so I won't I won't spoil it for her, uh, but uh, you might get some hints from what you'll see me do, uh, the process of setting up the area for the new addition. So first off, Mr. Shuffles, I love this rooster, Pink loves him too, he's a good rooster, shows the chickens where the food is, there he is, no tail, but he's healthy, he's doing well. Doesn't seem to be bothered with it. But, uh, you know, he's mellow and he's got a very low crow. Pink calls him Barry White because he has like a deep crow. And, um, but all of our chickens, you know, are like wondering what the heck is going on because we went from four roosters, four, four maniacs, to no maniacs. <laughs> right, guys? So, it's okay. They're like, they see each other because they have, uh, through the cracks of the pallets, they can see one another. And um, 
it's only temporary. We're planning on putting him back in with his chickens as soon as we can. We just want to give him a chance to heal and put his tail back a little bit, you know. This here is brand new. What I'm doing is I'm putting like a pallet wall behind the hutch here. And I'm probably going to move it uh, over another few inches because I have to put it mounted on the back side of the post there um, for a number of reasons. And but um, and then uh, we got I'm working on building something here, and then I'm working on building something here. Obviously, this is going to be like a half wall, and uh, but it's going to be moved up here, so it's going to be higher because I'm going to set it up on top of these pallets. I'm going to turn these around the other way because they're slightly longer, as you can see from this end, than they are that way. So I want to turn them the other way and then put the pallet on top. And then one of these pallets will stay at the bottom. The other one is going to go about three feet or two, whatever, and a half. I'm thinking three feet high up here somewhere. Probably like level with these. By the way, these came with the pallets that we got at Lowe's and they're coated with plastic and I stapled them to block the wind. Eventually, I want to put a, build a roof here that comes over this way or maybe have it on this side. I haven't decided yet which way I'm going to do it. Um, but um, for the time being, we're probably going to be using tarps and other things. But you know, it's like we're going into summer. So we're not too concerned, but before the fall, by fall, we definitely want to have this all closed in. No holes, you know, and close the gaps in the pallets. We're gonna probably, like I said, put plywood on the backside and um, close it as best as we can. And so that the animals will stay warm in the winter time. And, um, and there, there you go. But uh, this is a new space that we're creating now on this section of the barn for uh, new animals that will be coming in but you kind of get the idea so what do you think guys give us some ideas you know put in the comments if you have an idea of what we might be getting next like within next week <laughs> we've been working a lot with pallets now so as you can see like I have a stack back there that I've been picking up from uh, Lowe's and uh, including all of these shelving units which are absolutely incredible they really come in handy for storage and uh, we have another one over here of course they take a lot of space in the van but um, I can fit them I can usually fit a whole one of these and like all these pallets in one trip so it wasn't too bad these here are also there are uh, boxes that we picked up I took them apart for easier transport but they turn into boxes and uh, pretty heavy duty wood pretty uh, heavy uh, doesn't look very thick but it's pretty heavy and, and solid wood I'm going to join rejoin them together with screws and then we'll uh, line them with plastic and we'll use those for our potatoes so we'll be able to have um, boxes filled with dirt and uh, and then the potatoes so that they can grow into inside the boxes and that's how we're going to grow our potatoes I think for this year and we have two of them and actually I might be able to be able to pick up I saw they had another one but I couldn't fit it in the van yesterday so next time I go to back to the Lowe's parking lot <laughs> uh, I'll pick up the other one if it's still there um, maybe by then they'll have two or three more but I'll pick up as many as I can because that will save us so much money and they make great boxes and we're going to line them and staple them with uh, some thick plastic on the inside the sides the bottom will be open but the sides will be lined with the plastic so but look at all these pallets guys isn't that like beautiful look at that look how many shelving units pallets and then of course back here all of these guys All of these guys here, look at that, stacked up against each other. And then underneath here, I was able to pick up these two extra long pallets and they are built with two by fours and, um, you know, and they have like ducking, almost ducking looking boards going across and that will be my gate. So I'll use one on one side, one on the other and that opening, because it looks like it would be about five feet so that's ten feet 
So that's 10 feet, a 10 foot gate, because uh, there will be two gates, uh, 5 foot each, so there will be a 10 foot gate once opened. And, um, and then that way when we want to close it, we can close it. Probably going to put a couple of wheels here on one end, so it can move back and forth without having too much weight dragging from the hinges. And then we're going to mount a board on the end and, you know, and mount the brackets and then mount it to a post that we'll put up there. But, uh, but yeah, this is, look at this. And I have like a couple more pallets at the bottom of the hill so that I can use. And if you guys see something that gives you ideas as to, you know, what we could do, let us know, please. Let us know in the comments. And then this over here, of course, is the whole pile that I mentioned I need to burn. So um, that's got to happen. And, uh, and most of this is, we had quite a bit more, but I used most of it. And this is just very rotted. And I don't think I can do a whole lot with this, uh, with what's left here. So... Um, most of this is going to go to the burn as well. Those are our projects for our very near future. One of the big things I want to do now is clean up because I need to clean up. I have a lot of, you know, trees, the branches that I cut down, they need to be cut for firewood, some of them, and some of it will be burned. And look who came to visit. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. I'm playing hooky. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> you played hooky yesterday. I, mean. I know. Well, yesterday wasn't really playing hooky. Like, I was explaining to everyone what we're, you know, we're not. Oh, the process? Uh, yeah, well, we're getting animals, and but that's all they know. Yes, shh, it's a secret. See, she doesn't want me telling you guys. Yes. I told you. No, I want it to be a secret. But yeah, guys, you know, when we bought this property, we had no idea that the barn was here. And even though we had to go through a lot to get it to this point, and uh, a lot of trash, you know, but it is, uh, a, it is a, a blessing. blessing. That's the I word mean, I was looking for. It is really a truly a blessing that we were able to, to because look, the structure, I mean, it needs a new roof, but I put that tarp up there, remember, it covers the entire roof, and I'm going to do the same here. But shortly it's sound on that end. and it's strong and it, it houses, it's solid yeah very it solid it houses the animals right. perfectly and we yeah. can fit them all in a nice convenient space you know i i can do my morning and afternoon chores easily with the, with with all of the animals being in one space now um and it's it's going to be amazing we are planning on getting an incubator and we actually did it in italy and if you look at the previous videos you can see yeah we raised like uh, what 12 yeah, we or 15. Raised, yeah we had where was it whatever yeah whatever survived because they don't all make it but um uh, uh but we were able to get a number of chickens uh from uh, the incubator so it, yeah we it can works. do it yeah uh, so we've done it, we can do it, and we want to grow our flock, and the same thing with the rabbits, we want to breed the rabbits, and whatever other animals we will be introducing to the farms that will be um, for breeding purposes, because right. we want to raise them for meat as well. Eventually. Yeah, we yeah. want to be able to be as self-sustainable as we can exactly. when it comes down to our food sources, and knowing where yes. we're getting the meat from. Right. I, um, the eggs, whatever, um, and after look at that shirt full of eggs. I know, I want the eggs. A lot of eggs. I'm so excited! Look, I love the eggs. I love the eggs. <laughs> yeah, and after yesterday um, and our first experience of sending the boys off to freezer camp, it wasn't as emotional or difficult as I had initially thought it would be. So for me, that's. Um, I guess peace of mind, you know, we yeah. were, I mean, we're very thankful that we were able to harvest them. And I did tell them thank you as I was cleaning them and plucking them. I kept telling them thank you, thank you. Um, so, yeah. it, you know, again, part of being off grid. Yeah, and I mean, it's all part of the game, you know, guys. You know, I mean, it's part of our lifestyle that we've chosen. You know, uh, some people choose it, some food, people don't. Um, having the ability to rely on your own uh, food source. 
uh, your own water. Those are the two main factors. And then you want security is another big one because you want to make sure you can protect your property, your animals, and your family in case of anything. So, you know, uh, all of those things are part of off-gridding and being, you know, on a homestead, homesteading, um, farming, whatever right. you want to call it. Uh, it's a big part of that self-sufficiency, self-reliance, being able to rely on your own skills, mm -hmm. on your own two hands, and right. not have to rely on, you know, Job down the road for plumbing repairs or electrical repairs. You know, you do what you have to do, and right. anybody can really learn if they set their mind to it. It doesn't matter, you know, I'm not a young man, you know, I've always done this as an amateur. I'm not, never, not a professional. But, um, but you know, I, I, I'm able to do things for myself, for my family. We are investing in ourselves. We are investing in being able to have a future of self-reliability. Right. Not have to rely on the government, including electricity. Right, but the electricity, we're working could, towards that, the electricity could come last because we have to concentrate on getting the property and yeah. our food forests going and our animal flocks and herds going um, and being able to have our food source and our well, the artisan well that Mo will be doing soon. Yeah. Um, because we don't want to lose that connection with where our food comes from. Correct. Um, which a lot of people have. Because, you know, you, where, does, where does chicken come from? The store. I right. mean, and I'm guilty of that. I grew up in Brooklyn. Right. So, you know, as a little girl, where did chicken come from? Chicken comes from the A&P. The store, right. You know? <laughs> so, it's, it's, right. it's nice to be reconnected to that cycle of life. Yeah. Um, Plus, you know where your meat is coming from. Exactly. That was going to be you my know, next one. And, exactly. You know, you don't have to wonder if it's coming out of China, Russia, or... Exactly. What uh, was it fed? How know. was I it mean, kept? We try to think of all of that. You yeah. know, we, we, we want to keep our animals happy and healthy so that, as people say, they only have one bad day. Right. And, exactly. And that's it. And the yeah. roosters were happy. They just had, you know, everything went smoothly for us. It didn't yeah. go smoothly for them. But they were happy up until the moment. Right. They had no idea. I mean, right. I swooped them up and caught them and... They didn't even know what was going on. One of them didn't even realize I had them until it was too late. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, it was pretty quick. Uh, they yeah. didn't suffer, I promise you. Um, yeah, it was it's very, very, very quick. quick. I very took care quick, of that very part. Very humane. And, uh, yeah, and uh, I did it. Like, I looked like I had been doing it forever. Yeah. And I never done it, but I, I mean, we didn't film it, obviously. But right. Uh, Pink can tell you, I mean, I look like a pro. Yes. And, and, and it was very, very quick. And I think and I look like a pro catching and yes, plucking. Yes, yes. But, um, uh, you know, and it, it worked out. Yeah, it um, worked out well. You know, we gave thanks. We, we thank them for their sacrifice, you know, and we appreciate um, the life force that they had and that they gave up so that we can have two, three, four meals. Yeah. You know, um, and again, it's that connection with the food source. It's <coughs> it's knowing where your food came from, knowing how it lives, knowing how it's taken care of, knowing right. how it's processed before it makes it to your plate is a huge connection with the creation, with life, with nature. And that's another thing about being off-grid is, you know, Anybody who does live off grid or has a homestead or a farmstead, yeah. they understand. You do get connected to your you know, animals. And the same thing with prepping. That's another big part. That was going to be my fourth uh, point. Yes. So, you know, so self reliance includes all of those things, guys. Ch take a look at some of our older videos as well, guys. And I think you'll get to know us a little bit better. You can you... see where we've been, where we came from, you know, and what our journey's been thus far. I mean, this, right. is, this is our third homestead together. Um, and the second one starting from scratch with nothing but was in our suitcases. So, right. <laughs> um, we are not afraid of work. We are not afraid of sacrifice. We are not afraid of living on a tight budget and uh, taking a, a buckle around our waist from a belt and tighten it just a little bit so that we know um, at the end of the line we can have what we want and live the lifestyle that we want with the peace and the joy and the tranquility. I mean, I love this kind of life. You know, this is what I've always, I was always meant to live. 
in a place like this in so the country. So was I. And that's so why, was I. Uh, after I left suburbia several years ago, I said, and you too, you know, especially after we met, we turned our back to that kind of uh, craziness. Yeah, we did and, a complete um, 180. We are like, yeah, no we more. We were in South Florida. and uh, so The hustle, the bustle. That too. You it's, know. Yeah. But who wants to deal with that? I don't want to deal with that anymore. This is... This, this is, is our life. This yeah, is what this we is want what we've to do. Chose. And this is where we are happiest. This, exactly. All right, guys. Um, we're going to end it. And thank you. And I know we didn't really do much. We're just kind of showing you a little bit around of what we got planned. And um, stick around. Like and subscribe if, you've already, yes. if you haven't already done so. And we appreciate you watching as always. Until the next time. Yes. Peace, health, and happiness, guys. Always. Ciao. Bye. Thank you.